What's new in C Sharp 7.0? This is Rajesh Gunasun from ProgrammerGuide.net. C Sharp 7.0 adds a number of new features and brings your focus on data consumption, code simplification, and performance. These features will make your code more efficient, clear, and productive. Out variables. In older version of C Sharp, using out parameter is not as full fluid as we would like. Before you can call a method with out parameters, you first have to declare variables to pass to it. As given in this example, since you typically are not initializing these variables, you also cannot use where to declare them but need to specify the full type. However, in C Sharp 7.0, we have added out variables the ability to declare a variable right at the point where it is passed as an out argument. See here. Here, the declaration as well as the passing all both are combined together when calling this function get coordinates. Note that the variables are in scope in the enclosing blocks so that the subsequent line can use them. Many kinds of statements do not establish their own scope, so out variables declared in them are often introduced into the enclosing scope. Pattern Matching There are three types of pattern matching. Constant patterns type patterns and where patterns. Constant patterns test that the input is equal to C where C is a constant expression. Type patterns. This tests the input as type T and if so, it extracts the value of the input into a fresh variable X of type T. Here T is a type and X is an integer. Sorry, x is an identifier. Where pattern. It puts the value of the input into a fresh variable named as x with the same type as the input. Here x is an identifier. C Sharp 7.0 introduces this notion of patterns which abstractly speaking are syntactic elements that can test it that can test a value as a certain shape and extract information from the value when it does. Is expressions with patterns. Here in the example given, using is expression with constants and type patterns. As you can see, the pattern variables, the variables introduced by a pattern are similar to the out variables described earlier, in that they can be declared in the middle of an expression and can be used within the nearest surrounding scope. Also like out variables, pattern variables are mutable. We often refer to out variables and pattern variables jointly as expression variables. Here in this, O is null, it checks if, if O is null, then it returns from this function. Here the constant pattern null is used. It in the second statement, it checks if O is not an into type, then it returns it. Otherwise, it stores the value of O into an I. And in the third statement, it actually prints the value of i. Switch, statement, switch statements with patterns. C Sharp 7.0 has generalized the switch statement. It makes you to switch on any type, not just primitive types. Patterns also can be used in a case class. Case class can have additional conditions on them. 
for example here let's let's see how this switch statement is constructed here in the in this case it che it's it verifies it is if the shape is of type circle if yes then the shape will be assigned to c and the value of c dot radius is printed here that means the radius is the uh, property of the circle and the value has been printed in this right line and if the shape is of type rectangle and the length and the height of this rectangle value that is s is equal then it means that it is square it's not a rectangle so here the calculation of uh, the area uh, is calculated here s dot length into s dot height and in the third case statement it checks if the shape is of type rectangle and it, it's checking whether the length and height is equal here so that because if it is equal the second case itself will capture the request so as the second statement did not capture the request which it means that the third statement will have uh, unequal length and height which means it is a rectangle so here it calculates the rectangular a uh, rectangle area using l in l into height okay length and height so the default is unknown shape so if if none of this case uh, matches then it goes to case default and if the shape is null then it jumps to case null then it throws an exception throw new argument null exception name of shape there are several things to note about this newly extended switch statement the order of case clause now matters here just like catch clauses the case clauses are no longer necessarily disjoint and the first one that matches gets picked it's therefore it is important that the square case comes before the rectangular case as given here. Also, just like with catch clause, the compiler will help you by flagging obvious cases that can never be reached. Before this, you couldn't even tell the uh, order of evolution. So this is not a breaking change of behavior. The default class is always evaluated last, even though the null case above comes last. It will, it will be checked before the default class is picked. This is for compatibility with the existing switch semantics. However, but, however, it is good practice to usually have you put the default class at the end. Tuples. It is common to want to return more than one value from a method. The option available in older version of C sharp are less than optimal. How parameters are used for such scenarios, but is clunky and they don't work with async methods. System.tuple return types has been used. and custom built transport type for every method has been used anonymous types returned through a dynamic return type these are all high performance red and no static type checking you may not able to find uh, you may not able to capture the error at the during the compile time itself to do a better job here c sharp 7.0 add introduced tuple types and tuple literals the method now effectively returns three strings here wrapped up as elements in a tuple values. The caller of method will receive a tuple and can access the element individually. Like here as given here names.item1 and names.item2. And this is another uh, example for tuples where you would like to have a named collection of strings here string first string middle and string last when lookup name 
returns a tuple and each elements have names here so you can individually access the properties like names dot first names dot last as given in the right line statement you can also specify element names directly in tuple literals so in the lookup name function itself while returning you can mention which value to go on first and which value to go on middle and which go value to go last this is called named tuple elements in a literal deconstruction another way to consume tuple is to deconstruct them a deconstructing declaration is a syntax for splitting a tuple or other value into its parts and assigning those parts in individually to fresh variables here is the one example of deconstructing declaration here the return the return value will be stored into this deconstructions here first middle and last strings are defined inside a brackets so that you can directly access the first last or middle values wherever required in the next statement in a deconstructing declaration you can use where for the individual variables declared as give below say for example if you are not sure about the return type of the lookup name then i mean uh, the collection of values that is getting returned i mean the tuple values that is getting returned if you are not sure about uh, is it string or integer or some other value you can simply put where for first middle and last or even you can put a single where outside of the parenthesis as an abbreviation here as shown here you can also deconstruct into an existing variables with a deconstructing assignment say for example you have already declared first middle and last and you you can use that variable here first middle last instead of declaring them again or instead of declaring a new local variable local functions sometimes a helper function only makes sense inside of a single method that uses it you can now declare such function inside other functions bodies as a local function here there is a main function called fibonacci and inside that it also has a local function called fib where it takes integer value and returns a <coughs> tuple value that is in current and in previous so this local function will be available inside the fibonacci method or function literal improvements c sharp allows using an underscore to occur as a digit separator in, inside number literals say for example here t equal to 1 2 3 underscore 4 5 6 6 or another uh, example is x equal to some extra decimal value underscore cd underscore ef you can put them wherever you want between digits to improve readability they have no effects on the value also c sharp introduces binary literal so that you can specify bit patterns directly instead of having to know xr decimal xr decimal notation by heart so here where b equal to it has x uh, it has binary values defined here so ref returns and locals just like you can pass things by reference with the ref modifier in c sharp you can now return them by reference and also store them by reference in local variables say for example here you have a find method that ret that returns a reference integer type so it gets two parameters integer number and a collection of uh, and an array of integers of numbers okay so here in the return type it returns the reference of one particular item in the array of integers okay so if you see here it here let's consume this find method like array is a integer type array that has few set of values and 
there is a reference integer type variable called place and it calls the find method with the reference keyword so it allows us seventh place in the array actually it gets the seventh place it accesses the seventh place of array and it returns the reference of that particular item to place so on replacing any value to place it also replaces in the item of the array accordingly say here 7 will be replaced by 9 in the array when you print the array it prints 9 generalized async return types up until now async methods in c sharp must either return void task or task of t c sharp 7.0 allows other types to be defined in such a way that they can be returned from an async method for instance we now have a value task of type t struct type it is built to prevent the all allocation of your task of t object in cases where the result of the async operation is only available at the time of awaiting for many async scenarios where buffering is involved for example this can drastically reduce the number of allocation and lead to significant performance gains there are many other ways that you can imagine custom task like types being useful it won't be straightforward to create them correctly so we don't expect most people to roll their own but it is likely that they will start to show up in frameworks and apis and callers can then just return and avoid them the way they do tasks today more expression bodied members expression bodied methods properties etc expression bodied methods properties etc are a big hit in c sharp 6.0 but we didn't allow them in all kind of members. Sub 7.0 adds accessor, constructor and finalizer to the list of things that can have expression bodies. Here in the class person, so the constructor is defined like an ex expression body member. And even the destructor also defined using an exp expression body member. And you can also see the get and set also defined with the expression body member in the C sharp 7.0. Throw expression. It is easy to throw an exception in the middle of an expression. Just call a method that does it for you. But in C sharp, we are directly allowing throw as an expression in certain places. Here in the class person function, here in the written or here let's take this one first so in the constructor if the name passed to the constructor has some value then that value will be assigned to the public property of name otherwise it throws an exception throw new argument null exception thanks for watching please do subscribe